Hey everyone, it's Strangelove here, and today we're going to be checking out the new Ogden's Wild update in Slime Rancher. The update added a handful of free content to the game, including a new area called the Wilds, as well as some new Largo slimes called Saber Slimes, so for this video I'll be showing you around some of these new things in the game. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm probably going to shift away from the Let's Play videos for Slime Rancher and just do more commentaries and tutorials, because I like making more informative videos and they might be a little bit more digestible for newer Slime Rancher fans here on my channel, so um, let me know what you think of those as I roll them out. But anyway, let's go ahead and check out some of the awesome new stuff in the Ogden's Wild update. So if you're just now returning to Slime Rancher after the latest update on PC, uh, they did plan on rolling this out for Xbox, but they ran into a few bugs and hiccups, so hopefully that'll be coming to Xbox very soon, but we still have to wait a little while for that. Uh, but anyway, you'll notice that a few things have changed on the ranch since you were away. The most obvious changes are to the plort market as well as the range exchange. Now the plort market basically just got a visual upgrade, so it's a bit more stretched out, and now we can see that there are a few more spaces here for some new plorts as well, which is probably going to make way for some of the new slimes coming in future updates. The plort market also makes a really cool sound when you shoot plorts into it. It sort of sounds like when you go up the infinite stairs in Mario 64, uh, and I think it's just a really nice touch. Now, one of the most anticipated features of this update are the saber slimes, but these aren't technically separate slimes because according to the lore, the original sabers died out long ago and their descendants live on in Largo slimes. So the sabers that we're going to run into are only Largos, uh, but we will be able to collect their plorts and turn them in here at the market. Alright, next we have the Range Exchange, which also got a visual upgrade so that it's a little bit clearer to read, and we also have a brand new NPC named Ogden Ortiz, who is the focus of this entire update, and that is who it's named after as well. Now, just like the other NPCs, the only way to really speak to Ogden is through the Range Exchange or through messages, so the first time you're going to speak to him is going to be through the Range Exchange, uh, and so for me, Ogden wanted to trade me some plorts for a few carrots, Oka Oka, and some phase lemons, and I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but if so, that means that you're going to need to at least unlock the ancient ruins before you can experience some of the new Ogden's Wild content, because that's the only place that phase lemons are found as far as I know. And so if you're newer to Slime Rancher like I am and you haven't made it through the entire game, uh, you might have to progress a little bit further before you can experience some of the stuff in the Ogden's Wild update. Now, since I'm moving away from the Let's Play for Slime Rancher, I decided to go ahead and unlock the Ancient Ruins, which I will have a video on later, but long story short, I had some phase lemons ready to go in my grotto already, uh, and for this update, I got really confused because I didn't read the patch notes ahead of time, and when I tried to go harvest some phase lemons, I tried shooting fruit at the tree like you normally are supposed to, and nothing happened. I thought it was some sort of bug, I even went to the subreddit, and people informed me right away that it's actually just part of the update. Um, they changed the phase lemons to be just a normal fruit and they'll just be harvested normally. You can just suck them up with your backpack, which I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Uh, I kind of think it's a cool feature to um, keep the phase lemons like this unique fruit that has to be shot at in order to be harvested. Um, so they could have made it so that it was just a garden upgrade or something instead of just a flat out change, uh, but that's just me. So if you missed that in the patch notes, just know that the phase lemons are just normal fruit now. So anyway, once you trade with Ogden in the range exchange, he'll send you a message that basically asks you to visit him on his ranch, or what is called Ogden's Retreat. And the way that you get to Ogden's Retreat is by using the teleporter on the path in between your main ranch and the overgrowth side, uh, which means you'll also need to have unlocked the ranch expansion over here as well in order to meet Ogden. When you get to the retreat, you can talk to Ogden some more via his range exchange, where he tells you about the elusive and delicious Kukadoba fruits that can only be found in the wilds, and Ogden is obsessed with these fruits. Uh, he's He's also a master chef and food connoisseur, so he really wants some of these fruits for his recipes, but he's gotten too old to go and get them himself, and so he asks you if you'd be brave enough to go and collect these fruits for him, and in exchange he'll give you a new food called spicy tofu, as well as a few upgrades for your ranch. So if you're up to the challenge and ready to venture out into the wilds, all you have to do is hop through the teleporter at the end of the bridge on the right side of the retreat, and you're there. However, there are a few things you should keep in mind before heading to the wilds, because as the name implies, it can be a bit of a dangerous place if you don't come prepared. So first off, when you spawn into the wilds, you'll arrive at one of several possible teleporter locations, and the only way to leave is by finding another teleporter that's active. So you'll see broken teleporters all over the place, but just keep looking and you'll eventually find one that's active so that you can return to the ranch. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the wilds are inhabited by tons of these saber largo slimes, which are basically a hybrid of a saber slime and another random slime type. 
The saber slimes have these long fangs just like a saber-toothed tiger, they actually look really cute. And since they're related to felines, they look and act pretty much like cats. It's also important to know that every saber largo slime in the wild starts out feral, which means that they will aggressively attack you when you get close, and when they're in groups, they'll also sort of surround you and pounce on you from the sides, so you have to be very careful when you have a lot of sabers around. Now, since saber slimes are a feline slime type, any meat can tame them or calm them down, so it's best to bring along a handful of hen hens or roosters the first time you visit the wilds. I wouldn't necessarily recommend feeding every single saber slime you see, since you can just run or hop past them to avoid them most of the time, but if you're getting overwhelmed and need to get some sabers to leave you alone, uh, or if you want to collect their saber plorts, then this is how you're going to do it. Now, of course, don't forget that the whole reason you were sent to the wilds in the first place is to collect these little purple kookadoba fruits for Ogden. So make sure you've got an open space in your backpack so that you can start collecting these fruits, and also remember to upgrade your backpack capacity so that you can carry more each visit and you won't have to make as many trips. I've personally only made it to the 50 capacity upgrade, but I only had to make two trips to complete the first trade with Ogden, so it still really won't take nearly as long as if you didn't upgrade your backpack at all, so you're definitely going to want to do this. You should also keep an eye out for these little mud balls scattered throughout the wilds that look sort of like a patchy ball of a yarn, and these are actually multiple kookadoba fruits rolled into one, but you have to use these green kookadoba cracker machines to break them open. Always crack open the mud balls when you're collecting kookadobas because you can easily get five or six fruits all at once instead of having to harvest them one by one off the ground. Alright, so once you've gathered all the kookadobas you can handle, find your exit teleporter and head back to Ogden to turn in your fruit to his range exchange. And unlike the regular range exchange, the one on Ogden's retreat actually does not have a time limit, so there's no need to rush through the wilds, just take your time, and you'll eventually collect all of the fruit that you need. Once you turn in all of the coveted kookadobas to Ogden, he'll spit out some yummy blocks of spicy tofu, which is a brand new neutral food item that you can feed to any type of slime. And because of this, the spicy tofu come in really handy when you go into the wilds, which is probably why they were implemented as part of this update. Uh, so you don't always have to collect chickens and have meat on hand in order to tame the feral sabers when you're in the wilds. You can just bring the spicy tofu with you and it'll serve its purpose that way without taking up too many spaces in your backpack. Along with the tofu, Ogden will also give you different upgrades for your ranch, including Miracle Mix, a deluxe garden upgrade, and then eventually access to the retreat itself. Overall, I've had a lot of fun with the Ogden's Wild update in Slime Rancher, and I feel like the developers were really thoughtful in the way that they implemented a lot of this free content. The only criticism I have is that it seems like the content is a little bit easy, especially if you're a more experienced player. You're going to be able to get the upgrades in just a few hours. It really doesn't take long to play through all of the content in the update. So just keep that in mind if you're coming back to Slime Rancher after some time off. Uh, you're probably going to breeze through the Ogden's Wild update pretty quickly, but it's still really cool to have this kind of content implemented for free in a game like Slime Rancher. Alright you guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you found it informative, and I plan on doing more tutorial type stuff and overviews uh, for Slime Rancher in the future instead of the Let's Play series, and so uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought, and I hope to catch you all at the next video. Bye guys!